Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to RimWorld. In today's episode we'll be covering days 150 to 200. Uh, how long is this intro going to take? Um, <laughs> anyway, today's episode, um, again, Cassandra's a bit on the sleepy side. She wakes up kind of near the end, but anyway, as you can see, the colony's working out quite well. Uh, I still have the pigs, they will be gone midway through the episode I think the pigs disappear by the midway as I sell them out for yaks and uh, bison for caravanning purposes and then I get a use out of them uh, for said purposes but anyway how long did I, I think I only gave myself 30 seconds for the intro which is uh oh wait no here we go here we go we're getting into stuff so starting off today's events we have a mech cluster with a climate adjuster. This is an off-map problem causer. Um, basically, they're stuff that does stuff to your map or not be needing to be on your map. The climate adjuster is probably the least deadly, especially if you're on like mine where it's permanent summer, where that would drop me, I think, to like a 20-day non-growing period because it drops the temperature by 10 degrees. Now yes, if you're on a more extreme climate, that can be terrible because it can turn a 20 day growing period to a zero, meaning if you don't deal with it, you can't grow anything. And in extreme deserts, it can have the same effect if it's bumping your heat up. But it's, it's basically a 50-50 when it pulls climate adjuster of what's it going to give you. If it's 10 degrees up or 10 degrees down, it's always 10 degrees, never any other number. Uh, this is a, us hunting a grizzly because it was sniffing by one of our doors to try and find something to hunt. So I thought I'd put it down because I don't like my colonists getting eaten by grizzlies. Um, ah, and now we get to the climate adjuster. Now, interesting fact about uh, mechanoid uh, problem causes they spawn with a mech cluster surrounding the um, the room. If it's a tribal, they'll just be a tribal base. I have no idea what triggered it. I have no idea what triggered it. Because nobody walked into it. Unless it had a countdowner. Actually, it might have had a countdown. I can't... I don't know. But anyway, the reason why it's important to know that it's, um, it's a mech uh, cluster that surrounds is the fact that they, they don't travel very far. They won't leave the mech cluster. So, yeah, I just leave the I just use the back side of the of the door or of the um, building that the climate adjuster is trapped in to then um, not have a problem with uh, the rest of the car. Yeah, that's not a good sound. Uh, that's the that's them constantly switching to their secondaries because I'm a little bit too close. So I get a bit closer so they stop. Now, climate adjusters the easiest. You have other variants that can show up. The worst, honestly, is probably toxic spewer. It's between Toxic Spewer and, sm and uh, Smog Spewer. A, a Toxic Spewer creates a toxic fallout effect, which basically can um, cause all your colonists to slowly start developing cancers and kills all plants and animals on the map. Um, the Smog Spewer causes, causes it to be a constant eclipse. Also, here's the dumb thing, as I should have just moved them directly up. Also, I don't know why Owl keeps getting run and gun turned on. Because I swear I've had other combat bits where Owls also had run and gun active. And I don't know why that's a thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Owl's the only one to actually get hurt out of this. And he got hurt by a Tesseron, who are not very strong. I've mentioned that before, uh, as it one shot Jose in the face, but <laughs> Tesserons are more for breaking up your lines and getting them running around because they're on fire. 
Anyway, as we fade back in, we... Where are we? Oh, this is the mad squirrel. Uh, <laughs> kind of tell. Kind of a slow day, this. Um, <laughs> as I kept the slow... As I kept the squirrel in. But hey, it's fine. Um, <laughs> luckily, this doesn't actually count as one of the majors. Uh, so it's not like a... A big problem. Also, if you're wondering why giant sections of that place was um, seemingly no life in it, uh, there was a wildfire, so a ton of the plants were regrowing. But hey, they return. Nicole somehow passed out. I think that was because I was feeding them all raw corn. Um, word of advice: don't don't feed them potatoes. Oh, and now we get to see the. Weirdest thing, uh, well, I say weirdest thing. I think they were, I think they were lovers before this happened. But um, that's marriages on between owl and goat. The guy has that much riz that he can get her to marry her, get her to marry him while they're digging out machinery. <laughs> uh, production of my second geothermal. There's only two other geothermal spots that I will not be using because they are literally at the corners of the map. I've all, I will admit in a, I don't know if it will show up in the, um, in the next bit of programming because I don't know if I'll, if I'll keep it, but I do plan to get one, but it doesn't go well. Um, <laughs> it's so many resources and so little power. Um, but anyway, just setting up a geothermal. Now, the reason for the door is purely just in case the geothermal breaks down. Purely that. There's no other reason for the door. So the reason why it's never in a consistent place. It's not for, like, aesthetics. Also, you'll notice this is the monument done. Um, I sadly didn't actually get footage of it being fully completed. But, hey, it's done. I got architect. I got more points. Uh, I have used it to get a couple of um, men in black to join. Oh, then we go off to go do this fort assault because, as I mentioned, Cassandra is being sleepy. And these fort assaults are actually pretty simple. Most of the time, you'll... Based on how the quests come in, you will heavily outnumber the fort you're attacking. Most of the time. Now, yes... Be it that I'm saying most, there are times where you'll be, they'll say they want five soldiers to deal with a fort of like, of like 12, but they're a lot rarer. Although generally, these are only worth, um, honour. The main reason why they're only worth honour is, the loot usually sucks. Uh, this place I get a good bolt action rifle. That is it. That is all I get out of it. The rest of the the, the base I'm attacking is corpses and beds of lower quality than what I've got. <laughs> so why do you do the quest? Uh, honor. It is stupidly easy honor. Uh, the important thing to note here is where the turret is. The turret, which, yes, I am is out of range um, is on the north side of the building so I start attacking from the south so that as I get closer I don't accidentally run into range of the turret because you don't have to blow up the turret all you have to do is basically to win the quest you have to ensure that anything that could hurt you is off the map so Andy just runs mainly because I can't get close to my guys are kind of slow, he's not in any armour, or at least he's not in any armour that's slowing him down so he can easily run. But, I have to deal with the turret. So, be that I don't want to actually get shot at by the turret, what do I do? Although I thought I did it before I did the whole switching over of the bolt actions, but maybe... Oh wait, no, I think it was because I didn't realise it was the turret that I was waiting on. Um... <laughs> It's the reason why I know you have to destroy the turret. It's called hindsight. Um, anyway, yeah, I get... I then open the door. I think I could have just walked through it. Although it's... 
it's debatable when the doors are locked and when they're open, so still. Yep, there's nothing in there other than colonist corpses. And now I shoot. Now, I could have just shot the battery. That would have served the same purpose. I just shot the power conduit because... Eh, potato, potato. End of the day, it cut the power. And then we win because we've... Uh, the interesting thing about these is you technically don't pick who's getting the honor when you start. You pick after. Reason why for that. I'm guessing that's mainly down to the fact so the person who's meant to be getting the honor doesn't... If he... Basically, if you lose people during the raid, they don't accidentally give the honor to a dead man. Or, so you don't give the honor to a dead man because it's pointless. That's not how honor in this game works. <laughs> honor is a literal resource, not a not a social standing kind of thing. Anyway, this is just... What am I waiting on here? Oh, Out of the Dark Ages! The quest for getting all the medieval research. You may or may not have also noticed, as I have been keeping all the achievements I've got in, as they are kind of milestones for how this is going, I haven't done all Neolithic yet. <laughs> I'm missing, um, I think at this point I was missing tree sewing and cocoa, or, co or coca planting, or whatever it's called. Um, these are the double bedrooms, and going through all the partners I have, uh, which is actually quite easy thanks to the um, thanks to the menu mod. I think this is Dub's menus. I think it's Dub's menus. I can't remember. But yeah, got a lot of got a lot of people. So there was uh, McLaughlin and Nicole. I forget who gets put here. It's this. Who am I getting here? Salin and Sa yeah, Salin and Eli. Then it's. Higgs and Eric is one of them, and then we have Owl and Goat, who technically aren't married by this point, but they're to be married, and also my colony doesn't care. Um, <laughs> depending on your Ido, um, col depending on how strict physical love is, you can basically have it that they have to be married before they can share a bed. The reason why I moved them into the beds is not only to free up space in the barracks, but is because it gives everybody who's in a relationship an easy bunch of moodlets, because they like sleeping with their partner in a physical sense and in a in an emotional sense. They get a debuff if they're sleeping alone. Um, oh, here's the black hive. This one. Oh, this is the one I I. I get wrong because it's, um, <laughs> I had the door closed into my kill box. I don't know when I forgot to reopen it, but you'll notice they don't all go for the door. They all kind of scatter. That's because they don't have a clear entrance into the kill box and into my base. So they all kind of go all over the place in an attempt to um, break a wall down and get in. They are all kind of bad at it. And luckily Higgs, I have Higgs stay there as kind of a target to try and lure some people in. He does get a couple of them, which is, um, he gets the big guys who decide they're going to break one wall and then follow the maze. We then get everybody set up in, and in position. Now luckily we don't actually have to wait for them to or worry about them breaking down the doors, as for most of them, they can't, thanks to um, actually requiring um, siege weaponry. Um, it's one of the mods I got that makes breaking walls down harder. The main point is so you can't sit there, basically so for problem causes, you can't just sit there with an assault rifle and break a wall down, but you kind of can but it means the insects struggle to break down walls and actually be a threat. Um, and it's specifically insects. Like, with, ra with breacher raids, they can do it quite easily. They can uh, tear apart walls. But insects really struggle with it. Now, it might be because it's alpha animals, and the alpha animals don't work with the mod very well. Um... <laughs> 
it could be that. Anyway, I do the dumb thing of shooting at the downed animal. Never do that, especially if you have one new ones coming into your kill box, because they won't change target. They will just stay shooting at the one that was um you targeted them at. Anyway, I believe we now go on a finish off spree because there is quite a bit of them that need killing. Great. Uh, don't you love it when you miss your mouth when you're drinking from a Coke can? Uh, it's a great day today. Um. <laughs> Anyway, the Black Hive guys go down, we move back because we're not morons, although weirdly we wouldn't be in this mess if, uh, if I just left the door open. Now, I will admit by, I think it's next episode, the entire interior of this kill box will be different because I kind of learnt from the mistake of giving everybody in the kill box a 100% move speed. Um, why is that a problem? Well, it's obvious why it's a problem. They're moving at full speed when I could have them moving at 87% their full speed. <laughs> now, here's a little bit of... I could have done this better. It worked about as well as I intended, which is open the door to let them run in and then had these guys pull back. The main problem I had with it was the fact I didn't pull back far enough, so he was able to shoot from inside cover. And also Salin decided to have a freaking aneurysm. I don't... <laughs> I might need to look at the freaking uh, mod options for that sidearms mod. Um... <laughs> As I've mentioned before, I don't actually have my headphones in when I'm... Well, I have a headphone in, but it's not... It's connected to the PC, but it's not in my ear, if that makes sense. When I'm playing these. So, I don't hear the weird sound glitches when, uh, when mods freak out. Which is... Kind of funny and kind of sad to hear it in the recording. Um, <laughs> But hey, these things are held together with duct tape, bubble gum and... The hopes and dreams of a, well, of a moron, really. Um, the moron's me. But hey, here we are. So yeah, I leave Nicole to tend to her husband, who is doing smashingly as the uh, <laughs> as a bunch of acid courses through his veins, as that's what the um the black hive mainly spit is acid you know cuz they fight mechanoids that's what that's what mechanoids hate is being pumped full of acid i i mean it kind of makes sense not really but kind of Uh, I forgot how long this fight took. Funnily enough, when they're not being funneled into your kill box where they're easily easy to get at, it takes a surprisingly long amount of time to actually hunt down all the enemies that you'd need to put down. They also do a very nasty thing. Well, not nasty, but they do a, a weirdly tactical thing, let's call it, where um they kind of cut my power up. Now you may notice a bit of the walls down between me and the power and the geothermal. I thought that they wouldn't have cut the power because they only destroyed the wall. No, they destroyed a power cable that is under the wall near to the power ge near to the geothermal. In a big brain plan that I don't think a bug could ever do on its own. Um. <laughs> But yeah, it's just a bit weird. I think I also have a ability check midway through this episode of seeing what abilities 
people have got as I was checking who was viable to become shooting specialists. It's almost everybody, by the way. Uh, when we get there, I'll actually note who's vi who's uh, not viable, but almost everybody is viable to become a shooting specialist. It's just I don't want everybody to become a shooting specialist. I would start having job problems if I did that. Anyway, oh, here we go. Here's the skill check. Because that was me checking what you actually needed to become a shooting specialist, because I forgot. But there's McLaughlin's stats, Nicole's. You may notice um, the giant numbers. Um, I'll mention a mod that I have on that I always have on because I love it, because I, I've always not been a massive fan of the degrading skills in RimWorld. It's mad skills. The entire point of the mod is that it stops skills degrading over time. It's really powerful, but it's also funny, so I like it. Um, <laughs> it basically means you're more, you are way more likely to see colonists, especially in the late game, who have like 20 in, a, in their passion stats. Now, yes, it does not mean you can have a colonist who has like, like I can't make Higgs have what go from one in artistic to twenty. Technically, if I had enough time, I could. But why would I even bother? Um. I have someone who has. I think. Who do I have who has? Someone has a passion in art. Or did he come later? He might have come later. The guy who has passion in art. Oh no, there he is. It's a uh, cat. Cat has a passion in art. Oh, and now we start the production of the 60 food, because I accept a paid EMI field for a Psylink Neuroformer. What are any of those words? So, a paid EMI field, it's an EMP. I don't know why they're called EMIs. I mean, I guess it's electric magnetic interference, rather than a pulse, but it basically kills all your powered stuff. The reason why I was building 60 uh, simple meals I wasn't going to have any food production. Now, I think I... Actually, no, I don't. Never mind. I keep forgetting that I don't have all my vanilla expanded mods on. Because I wanted a rather basic gameplay. I say that I added a bunch of new mods that I didn't know. But anyway, that's what an EMI field is. The paid just means I get something out of it and it only lasts... Uh, this lasts four days. I think it did. The Psychic Neural Former is a, um, well, it's the thing that makes your colonists be able to shoot lightning out their hands and, you know, do their best Palpatine impressions. Uh, I have vanilla Psycasts expanded, mainly just off of the fact that I'm not a great fan of, funnily enough, I'm not a great fan of vanilla Psycasting. Um, <laughs> Not in the sense of, I'm not a fan of the mod, I'm just not a fan of how it works in the base game. Mainly because I don't... I don't like the fact that you have three trees, of which one of them you're completely locked off to if you didn't pick the tribal start. Because I hate tribal starts. And anyway, here we go into an actual raid, a proper raid, of which I cannot remember if they're impids or not. I think they're either impids or they have a lot of flame bows. Because I don't think anybody actually shoots fire out their mouth in this. Also, I again send them too late. Uh, I need to be sending them like now, where they are in the uh, in the maze. I start sending people now, so they get there by the time the raiders have made it halfway across the kill box. Because I will say again. I am a moron. <laughs> Luckily, uh, raiders, especially tribal raiders, kind of act weird in this kill box. Um, I'm guessing it's because most of these guys have bows, which I rarely actually see in a uh, in a tribal raid. Generally, you get a bunch of um, a bunch of melee guys. I have one that will be in the next episode which is a bunch of Neanderthals. I hate Neanderthals, but not for the reason you're thinking. Um, it, it's because it's too hard to tell the difference between a Neanderthal and a baseliner, especially when they're wearing masks. 
I thought I was having an easy raid. It wasn't. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's kind of beside the point. Or is the point? I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, we end up dealing with this uh, bunch of uh, bunch of impids. I don't recruit anybody because I'm not looking for people at the moment. Well, I'm looking for people, but I'm looking for very specific people. It's the reason why I started doing the Men in Black joined. I'm looking for soldiers now. I'm not looking for anybody else. I'm not looking for, like, a socialist who can talk people into joining our, our little cult. But, yeah, it all works well. Uh, what's this? Oh, the psychic ship. Oh, this is fun. Now... I forget if it was royalty or biotech. I think it was biotech. Added Militors. They're tiny little, cruddy little mechs with a tiny little shotgun who, on their own, are not very powerful. However, they are cheap. And so the game can send you mass quantities of them <laughs> in an attempt to try and kill you. <laughs> Hence why that psychic ship is guarded by not one, not ten, but 48 Militors. Also, yeah, Cat becomes an adult. Uh, I gave her the nimble trait, even though we're not... We're shooters. Like, we're ranged people. Uh, mainly because all of our other traits are bad. It's one of the main benefits of... One of the balancing benefits of having, like, vanilla traits extended. It means you are less likely to make god pawns out of children. As technically she would have been a god pawn there. As in the base game she probably would have had like tough or something show up. Because even though there's a lot of traits in the base game. Not that many when you actually start looking into it. <laughs> Surprising, uh, surprisingly small amount for a, um, for a game with uh, amount of randomization as this has. Oh and then. Okay so here's how I dealt with this. I cheated. <laughs> I... Basically, how mechs work with a psychic ship is they stay around the psychic ship. There is a leash area, which means if they leave it, they will immediately start returning to it. Militors don't have that much range, ow, because they have shotguns. I, I basically was just running in and out of their leash range so that they would charge me, try to get and shoot a rocket, uh, their shotguns at me, and then run run back backwards and forwards um this took multiple days uh the thing upgraded to a medium which i think is like four days i think it's two days for each upgrade i think now the reason why i was doing the kiting and not just because i could have in theory just destroyed the ship from what i was doing especially after a while um i didn't destroy the ship first because i was and I might be under wrong impressions here, but once you blow up the ship, I'm fairly certain all the rest of the mechs become just generic mech raiders. Like, they'll just attack your base. Meaning I would go from having an easy way of dealing with like 20 mechs of just going backwards and forwards, to being charged by 20 militors with shotguns. Also, we start Starflight Basics here, as we're getting close to our ending. Um, oh, and then this is the dance party to which I think even the gods do not like us anymore. As Meteor Shower. <laughs> Immediately. Almost destroys one of the monuments, although luckily uh, it's far past. I could tear that down if I wanted to. Um, and then I, I think we get a Manhunter pack by the end of this. Uh, we also, I think, get a person who doesn't show up. Is this porcupine? So I remember, I remember making a note of it. Of there was a dance party I had where the person didn't show up. Where is it? Uh, yes, this is this is porcupine. Here we go. Porcupine doesn't show up. Um, I accept him. I I swear I I click accept, but he does not show up. Um, as, yeah, this is the one with the Manhunter pack of huskies, I want to say. Was it huskies or was it? It was some kind of K 
canine. I think it was a husky. I could have, funnily enough, actually taken this. I, f I believe I could have taken this. Uh, as huskies, not that strong. They're actually be better used as work animals than attack animals. But hey, they're not terrible at it. Also, they picked the one. They picked the wrong door. They immediately started running up towards uh, one of our side entrances, which eh, I'm fine with. Uh, although you are about to see proof of why they're not brilliant attack animals. Uh, why is that? Also, no porcupine. I did accept him. He just never showed up. Oh wait, no, we got Ripper's rescue. Because Porcupine didn't show up, I, w I felt I'd been jibbed a colonist. I had not received him, and so I decided I was going to get a colonist, no matter what. <laughs> so I I decided to go help Ripper. Uh, but not first, because we needed uh, the Huskies to leave. And I thought, oh, they're all sleeping, so they're just going to leave when they wake up. Nothing else interesting is going to happen with the Huskies. And I assure you, nothing nothing else interesting did. Of course, I lied. Raw tribute collectors! Um, they just immediately start attacking the Huskies and get attacked by... Um, now, how many do you think they're going to lose? I, also, I was away from... I was looking at something else, and then I looked up to see, see this as... Uh, yeah, they completely decimated those guys. <laughs> I think did they even go out of their way to kill that one. I can't remember if they do or if he runs away. But anyway, we are now leaving to go help Ripper. Oh, wait, no, I skipped that bit. Um, now we have the caravan attack, which is a thing that can happen with caravans if they're over a certain value. However, this is just a singular imp trying to get McLaughlin, who was, I think... I think he had 11 shooting, and Stalin, who's 17, with masterwork assault rifles. How do you think this goes? Hint, not very well. <laughs> As we then, and also she's not very good, so I don't bother. I could have taken her due to the, um... Also, on a side note... As I kind of like this thematically, we were here to pick up Ripper. As we enter the as we enter the area, there is literally a Ripper hound right there. But anyway, his rim's brightest. Spent a total of two years researching. As yeah, if I was going to redo this series, I think I would do them sixty days, not fifty. Not for any, not for any like time reasons or like getting footage. Also, yeah, both of them have food poisoning. I sent them out with raw potatoes. Don't do that. Give them, like, raw corn. Raw corn never gives people food poisoning. Raw potatoes do. <laughs> but anyway, back to my point. Um, uh, 60 days is a year in RimWorld. I, I, I realised that on further research. Uh, if you can't tell, I can't, kind of started making this series on a whim. And again, I do that with all my series. I just make them on a whim. Um, the things with these, uh, you'll end up... You end up needing to go... I think we just reform the colony from the... Or the convoy... Yeah, we just reform it from the map. Um, every now and again, you'll get them show up. The more colonists you have, the rarer they'll be, because the game doesn't want you to have 97 different colonists. And, um, yeah... Basically, you show up, you get them, they'll always join, or they're very likely to join, and they'll come with you. Anyway, this has been Rimwall. Also, this one almost gave me a heart attack. It's just a trading caravan. <laughs> All I read was the people involved, and I thought I was about to get murdered. Um, <laughs> anyway... This has been Rimwald. I've been Inquisitor. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot. Bye.